Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us this afternoon. We are going to be talking about inclusive technologies uh, and doing a, a very brief 25 minute exploration of um, some of Google's accessibility tools. If you were here before um, the recording started and if you're watching it live, you'll know that um, Chris mentioned that um, you know, Google is really, it, this stuff is really important to us and um, it was great to see that connection um, with the keynote this morning and unfortunately I was on a meeting for the keynote but Chris was kind enough to share the, um, the recording with me and I loved listening to her talk about how effectively technology was able to um, create an opportunity for her to long, learn alongside her peers and, you know, break down those, those barriers and really personalise her experience. So I'm going to uh, explore sort of high level Google accessibility with you this afternoon. Uh, we do have some really awesome online resources around accessibility, um, which I will share with you as well. Um, and I am very happy for people to reach out if they have any specific questions as well. Um, so my name is Kimberly. Um, I am in the Google for Education team um, based out of Melbourne, which uh, I don't know if there's any other Melburnians on the call, but it means that um, I haven't really left my house for five weeks now or something. Um, so it's really lovely to see people uh, online since I'm not allowed to see them face to face. Um, but um, my background is as a teacher and I was really fortunate to have actually got to do some work uh, in a special school in uh, Melbourne as well. And um, that for me was the moment when I realised that uh, it was so important that we were um, spreading the word and, and teaching as many people as possible about some of the simple um, ways that we can modify our practice, um, empower our students to be able to make choices that allow them to personalize their learning experience. Because uh, in many cases, in my experience, um, students would rather miss out than stand out when it comes to learning and um, engaging in class. And so um, empowering them with the tools to personalize their learning experience can actually um, help us in that space. And that is my um, email address on, um, the screen and I, I am very happy as I said if there are any specific questions that you have around your specific context and your specific students I'm really quite happy for you to reach out to me and I will uh, help you um, or direct you in the right direction as well. So we are going to, I'm going to, before I kick off, I do want to just acknowledge, because I know I am in Melbourne, I know there was an acknowledgement of country uh, at the start of the conference, but I did want to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands on which I am on, so the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, uh, and recognise their continuing connection to the land and pay my respects to their past, um, present and, and uh, elders emerging. So accessibility with Google is a really important part of um, what we do. It's really important to us as an organization. It's even in our mission statement. So Google's mission statement is to take the world's uh, information and make it universally accessible and useful for everyone. So it's something that's inbuilt into the way that we work, inbuilt into our tools and inbuilt into our mindset. Um, and when we talk about accessibility in education, we want to make sure that it's for every student, you know, every educator and every classroom that we are considering the way that we design um, our resources. Um, and this is really, as I mentioned before, really about this personalising of learning. So I think traditionally we've sort of, um, we have had for a long time this um, pigeonhole for accessibility. And when we talk about and think about accessibility features as being something for students who may need additional support, but really so many of the accessibility tools that are built into um, all of the different products are as useful to people on, on all different levels um, and abilities. And I personally use so many of the accessibility features on a genuine daily basis in the way I work because uh, it makes it so much easier for me to collaborate and communicate as well. Oh, sorry, I just went the wrong way. Uh, so um, uh, some of the stats that we have around uh, disability in Australia, so we have the stat that one in five Australians actually have a disability and that 77% of classrooms in Australia have students with diverse learning needs. Um, and the interesting thing about this stat of it being 77% of classrooms have um, students that have these diverse learning needs is that these are just the students that we know about because they've been tested and they've been categorised and they've been labelled in that way. Um, when really we know that every single student that we work with is unique and uh, we need to work out how we can best personalise the experience for them. Uh, I'm going to skip over a couple of slides because I'm conscious of the time here. 
Uh, so as I mentioned at the start, um, it is really important to Google um, about accessibility and it's everyone's responsibility. Um, we have a whole lot of really cool things to do with that. But one thing I just did want to call out um, is that it's not only in the way we build our tools, but it's the way we work as an organization as well. And something that I only learned about this year, which I think is such an amazing thing that's available to um, Googlers around the world, is that we actually have these accessibility discovery centers where they actually have designed these spaces um, to enable employees of Google to go in and and um, experience the tools and experience different situations um, through the eyes of others. So actually, you know, getting hands on and actually embracing what does it mean to learn in this way or what does it mean if I'm going to use this particular product and I, I might have, um, you know, vision impairment or something like that. And I think that's such a really, really cool thing um, that exists uh, in the organisation. So I'm going to jump in now and um, just talk to start start with about a few different Chrome um, book features to do with accessibility. Then I'm going to talk about some G Suite features with accessibility, and then I will end with um, some of our awesome tech partners that we um, collaborate with at Google. And I think that's one of the best things about Google is that we're really open to collaboration with others um, and some of their accessibility tools and how they can enhance uh, the way that we are working together. So I am going to have to, uh, I'm going to jump out of this. Sorry, I'm going to have to stop sharing because I only shared my tab and share my whole screen. Here we go. Right, I'm trying to resist the temptation to use that like totally overused phrase right now of can everybody see my screen? Um, but um, I'm pretty sure you can. And oh, and, oh, and I just accidentally pressed stop instead of <laughs> switch. Sorry, everyone. And, and we can see it too. I know, I know. And I probably pressed the wrong You're thing. You're doing so well. I know, I was doing well momentarily. I'm going to just jump in here and share my whole. Okay. Take three again. You can see my screen again now, right? Yes, we can. Great. Thank you, Chris. OK, I'm going to jump in. And uh, as I said, I'm going to show you a few Chromebook accessibility features. Um, if we had you know, three hours, which I'm happy to hang around if anyone wants to hang around for three hours and talk about accessibility, um, I would jump into a whole lot of things that we just don't have time to today. So I want to just show you some of my, I guess, the things that I see most commonly used um, support that personalization of learning for um, all different types of learners. So with Chromebooks, one of the really cool things about um, Chrome is that accessibility is really as um, that slide we just had up was is really out of the box. So it's built into the way um, we actually design the Chromebooks. So you'll see on my um, screen that uh, in my systems menu, I have my accessibility uh, functions built in here. Now you can push that out through the admin console. I'm 99% sure. Chris or Rich, if you're still on, you'll probably correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but if you don't see accessibility in your systems menu, you can actually jump into your uh, settings uh, down to accessibility and you have this option here to put it in there. I always recommend to people that you add it here because it ne enables you to toggle on and off um, key accessibility features really quickly and easily. So um, a couple that I have on, you can see that I have them on straight away is, and you probably already noticed the first one is that I do have my mouse cursor highlighted. You can do things like have a larger mouse cursor as well. Um, but I personally find, and um, for me, particularly now in this environment where I'm, um, you know, working at home with multiple screens and trying to work out things, I lose my mouse. I don't know if this happens to just me, but I lose my mouse about 50 times a day on my screen. I can't work out which screen it's on. Uh, and, and for me, even just turning on the mouse cursor highlight actually made a huge difference to me how to locate it. But if you're ever presenting to anybody or trying to highlight stuff, it obviously is going to make such a, um, a bigger difference to the people that you're working with, whether they're students or whether they're adults, if they're actually able to track your mouse cursor around the screen. So a really simple one that can have a really big impact. Another one that I use all the time that's in built into Chromebooks is this full screen magnifier. And basically what this enables me to do, and I'm 99% sure it'll work um, when I'm presenting. Can if I zoom in, is that showing you zooming in? Chris, can you unmute and tell me? 
Yes, it is. Working oh, fine. perfect. So you can see that this is a really, um, it's a really smooth Zoom function that's built in. So basically, once I enable it, I just hold down uh, Control and Alt on my keyboard, and then I just move two finger scroll along um, to whatever it is that I want to scroll into, and it follows my mouse cursor around the screen. But it, it really is a game changer in terms of a whole lot of different things. So obviously, if I want to draw your attention to certain things, if I want to help keep you focused, um, if I just need to help you read things, because we've all been on those websites where um, the person who designed them really didn't think through the fact that I can't read size four font. Um, you can actually just use this in, in, in order to actually um, be able to digest the information a lot more readily um, and, and usefully. Oops, sorry. I always make people seasick though when I do it. Um, so apologies if that happened to you without any prior warning then. So that is um, a really simple one in there um, where we have the full screen magnifier. The other one, and I've never actually tried this out over at Google Meet, so I'm not I'm not convinced I'm going to right now, that I do think it is a really good awesome. one. The other day for someone, it does work. It's a good one. It does work, does it? The docked magnifier. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So the Dopt Magnifier is another really great magnification tool built into Chrome where you'll see what happens when you use the Dopt Magnifier is it'll actually split your screen uh, into two thirds, one third, and the top third is going to highlight whatever it is uh, you are doing in the bottom third. And so this is a really great one, especially when we're going back to that thought around, okay, how do we help um, kids to be able to engage with content um, that works for them and personalizing the experience for them? They can have this going and, um, you know, when it's appropriate and when they need to actually have the stuff magnified, it's just up, they just glance up to the top third of the screen uh, and they can toggle that on and off really quickly and easily as well. And there are keyboard shortcuts to toggle all these things on and off. I'm really bad with keyboard shortcuts. I know Chris Betcher is like the king of keyboard shortcuts and I am definitely not the queen of that, that's for sure. Um, one more Chromebook uh, accessibility feature that I will show you very quickly as my computer catches up. Um, and then we'll jump into some G Suite ones. Okay, great. Um, it is down here, I think up here, is our um, selector speech. So we have a couple of different um, uh, speech to text um, options that I'll talk about in G Suite products as well. We also have this amazing Chromebox built into Chromebooks that I won't go into right now. But um, selector speech is a really great uh, thing that's built into Chromebooks that enables you to literally um, select any text on any page um, anywhere on your Chromebook and it will actually read it to you. So I'm pretty sure I do know the keyboard shortcut. I'm just going to try and challenge myself. I should never do that live, but I'm pretty sure if I highlight this text and then I, oops, I'm having trouble highlighting apparently, and I press my search and S button. On Chromebooks, press Control plus plus to increase size of browser content, Control plus minus to decrease, press Control plus shift. Great, yeah, I actually got that. And now that, that was for you, Chris Betcher, my um, my keyboard shortcut. Um, so so you can also <laughs> hold down the search button and just drag a box around the text you want to do too. Yes, if I do that now. Nope, not letting me do that on my slide deck. I'm pretty sure it does it on the web though. Yeah. yeah. Also not working for me right now. Sometimes things when you're actually in, in presentation mode, sometimes I don't like to play nicely. No, I, that's what I, I was worried about, my docked magnifier in um, a meet call, because I know that sometimes my computer doesn't like me doing 25,000 things at once. Um, this is the uh, blog post that Brent mentioned, if you were in the last session, by the way. I was just reading it myself. Um, so that's sort of the... Um, some of the some of the uh, accessibility things that are built in to Chromebooks, and as I said, um, there is a huge list. There is a whole lot of additional resources that you can um, access around any of these as well. But I did just want to do that high level ones for you, um, and then I did want to jump over and talk about some of the accessibility features that are built into our G Suite products. Um, before I, yes, it's also worth just pointing out too that that voice that reads the the um, the speech text to speech can be customized to any accent or, or anything you want and different speeds um and there is actually i believe even the ability to import additional voices as well yeah. um so there's uh, i think there's there's a huge number in there natively but then you can actually import additional ones as well 
Um, so I'm going to jump in and talk about a few G Suite accessibility features, um, and then we will jump back and um, talk about, as my apologies if you can hear my background soundtrack of my two-year-old waking up from his nap. Um, that is the joys of working from home that many of you have no doubt experienced. Uh, so before I do that, um, if you are uh, watching this um, right now, you're in our meet call right now, what I would love to encourage you to do is actually um, turn on the closed captions within Meet if you haven't. Brent referenced this in our um, last call, but if you hover your mouse over the bottom of your Meet call, you'll actually see that there are closed caption options for you. Um, and these are really, really impressive in terms of actually captioning a um, Meet call. And in this time where we're doing um, you know, all kinds of different models of learning uh, near and far in different locations. Uh, it can be really impactful to be able to actually read what's being said in the call as well as uh, listen along as well. So test them out. They're really great um, at actually showing you who spoke and what they said, etc. as well. So turn them on if you haven't tested that out. I'm going to jump into slides and um, just show you um, my all-time favorite slides feature. I know Chris has about a thousand all-time favorite slides features, but this is probably my all-time favorite. Um, and that is actually keeping on the closed caption uh, idea. It is closed captioning within slides. So imagine here that I didn't just have a blank slide deck, <laughs> that I had um, a presentation that I wanted to do, or I can do it with a slide, a, a blank slide deck. When I go into presenter mode for my slides, You'll see um, when I hover my mouse over my slide deck at the bottom of the slide deck is my menu for slides. And there are a couple of really um, cool tools that are built in here. There is, oops, there is a really cool, sorry, I'm just, my mouse just moved onto my other screen. Um, there is a, um, a great little Q&A function, which we won't go into now, but it is, um, it does enable you to basically set up a back channel for your slides, um, which is a really great way of giving a voice to students who may otherwise not want to raise their hand and ask a question in the classroom. Um, there is a laser pointer built into slides as well. Once again, similar to this concept of our, um, you know, highlighting our mouse cursor, being able to draw attention to particular parts of our presentation that we have on the screen. Um, but the one that I did want to show you was our closed caption in slides. And you can, let me just zoom out. So once I turn this on, oh, I've not used it in this account before. Uh, you'll see that it will now start to close caption what I'm saying on the screen. And um, I'm going to just change the text position to the top and the size to medium. And I find that it does a very, very good job of working out what I'm saying. And you might have noticed then when I said I find that it actually wrote iPhone and then corrected itself because what's happening with the oh, little set, I, I did write iPhone then. And what's happening is that it's uh, obviously listening for the phonetics of what we're saying, so the sounds that we're producing as we talk. But um, the amazingness of machine learning, uh, it also actually rereads it and does a semantic analysis of what we're saying. And so you'll actually see it correct itself uh, based on things that you are saying and, and, and whether it can actually add additional meaning to it. One thing I will say that if you haven't used this before, if you're going to start using this, and I really strongly encourage you to do it, um, that it is super duper distracting as someone who's presenting because you are so tempted just to read the closed captions and be like, oh, yes, I got it right. No, wrong the whole time. Um, so um, try and position yourself somewhere where you can't see your closed captions is my like expert tip. Um, but I think this is such a really great uh, opportunity to once again, Embrace the power of technology to support some of our learners. So um, right now I have literally nothing on my slide deck. We're just utilizing the power of the um, closed captions. And you could think about how you could do that if you're in a physical classroom, for example, where you have, you are, you know, projecting your, um, your slides onto a screen, don't necessarily sharing anything from there, but actually just using the closed caption or having the kids um, who might benefit from this sit closer to you at the, you know, wherever you are in the room um, and actually just running it on their own computers as well. So really simple um, but effective tool there. I'm going to get out of it. I think it did a pretty good job of um, keeping up with me then too. Um, okay, I'm going to jump over. How are we going? Five minutes to go. Gonna jump into docs, and I am using that um, 
shortcut if you haven't really explored it before. So um, docs.new or slides.new um, or sheets.new will start a new doc or slide for you rather than because nobody has time to go to drive or docs and then create new. Nobody can do that. So I'm going to jump into slide, docs and share. If you haven't seen this, then this is um, this is my all time favorite thing full stop in um, any G Suite product, I think. It's a big statement. Um, and that's under our tools um, menu in docs. And it is our voice typing. Um, and this is super, super incredibly powerful. So um, once you've turned it on, it will only work in a Chrome browser or a Chromebook. It will not work in any of the other browsers. So if you go to your tools menu and you see it grayed out, it's probably because you're not in Chrome. Um, uh, you get your microphone, click on your microphone to start recording you, full stop, new paragraph. It does a really good job of keeping up with you even if you speak at this speed, comma. Sometimes I manage to confuse it, but the majority of the time I find that it will actually transcribe everything that I say, even when I use colloquialisms, full stop. So you can see there that um, it has done a great job of transcribing everything. And this is really impressive um, from a point of view of thinking about our learners and how many of them have amazing ideas in their heads that they struggle to get out onto paper and sometimes that's just um you know a, a block around oh, i don't want to spell it incorrectly or I, you just you know um issues with potentially dexterity and typing and things like that and actually enabling them to um, have multiple methods or mediums of input um, can be really powerful um, you can see at the top of the microphone that i can actually change the input language and i was doing uk english if i changed it to australia it would have even done a better job but there are a huge number of languages um, that it will input uh, straight into. So another great one when we are talking about um, kids whose first language may not be English, enabling them to get their ideas out of their heads um, in whatever their mother tongue is, coming up to your awesome tools menu again and just translating the document into English if that's appropriate for your context. So a really simple, um, really effective tool that's built into Docs. Um, all right, I'm going to jump over because we have three minutes and I do want to just share, if for nothing else, to um, talk briefly and then share the, uh, a resource with you about um, some of our amazing tech partners that have built uh, accessibility extensions in Chrome. So if you're not used to the concept of a Chrome extension, um, basically what these do is that these will add to your Chrome browser or to your Chromebook um, and they will, I guess, allow you to do something beyond what the standard product set would enable you to do. Um, Google leaves the back end of code all open to enable these awesome people to um, enhance our products even further. I could have a list of, without any exaggeration, 50 Chrome extensions on the screen right now, so I tried to narrow it down to like a top group of um, Chrome extensions. Um, and if you uh, just Google any of these, you will find them in the Chrome web store where you can choose to um, install them yourself. Just very quickly in, in one minute, I will um, talk about a couple of ones that are pretty impressive um, for a couple of reasons. So um, one of my new favorites is actually Moat over here um, and this will enable you to leave voice notes um, on or uh, in, in in docs or slides in the comment section and what it'll actually do is not only record your voice but actually record the transcription of what you've said as well once again sometimes being able to have that input in lots of different ways can make a really big difference to the ability to um, take in what we're actually sharing with um, our young people um, and my all time favorite Chrome extension is uh, Read and Write here. Um, this one is a freemium product, which is, you know, the, everyone's favorite idea nowadays. Um, it is free for teachers. And if you Google free for teachers read and write, you'll find the link where you fill it in and get the um, premium version for free. Um, this has so many amazing functions built into it um, word prediction, picture dictionaries. Um, it does all kinds of really cool things on the web as well as in G Suite tools. So you can highlight things that will collate all of those highlights pull them off web pages for you and create new Google um, Docs with them. It creates vocab lists with pictures. Um, just a really phenomenal tool that if I only had one Chrome extension, that is the one that I would pick hands down. Um, and I've probably been saying that for about five years. So that's saying something about the quality of that tool. Okay, I have one minute to go. So what I'm going to do is I just want to show you uh, forward slash accessibility, the um, Google accessibility page. Now there are a whole lot of different uh, resources that you can access around accessibility. Um, and this is our sort of one-stop shop to get started with that. So google.com forward slash accessibility. 
Um, and you'll see in here you can come in and you can learn about our products and our features. There's some really awesome videos, etc., so on and so forth. Um, but very finally, and I know that this website changed to anywhere, teach anywhere or something, didn't it? Yeah, teach from anywhere dot Google. Um, this was our site that was made during uh, the first round of COVID sort of shutdowns. And um, on here, though, there are some really fabulous resources. The reason I share it still is that there's some fabulous resources for both teachers, schools and families. Um, and as part of that, if I jump into the family section, um, we actually produced a huge guide of resources around supporting families um, to support their students who had um, different learning needs um, when they were learning at home. So a really great resource there as well and that is time so I'm just going to so jump back into oh my closed captions are still going crazy on my meat <laughs> look at me totally um seeing how much I can make my computer work oops I was just going to bring back up what is a genuine offer that if you um if you do have any specific questions um, or if you have specific needs, specific kids in mind that um, you'd like to ask if there's anything that could do X, Y, and Z to support them, feel free to reach out to me because I really do believe that um, this is such an important thing for us to um, continue to spread and help and empower um, everyone to be able to personalise that learning journey for themselves. So um, that's it.